What does it mean to be a true watchman? Today, it seems like everyone wants to designate themselves as a watchman. The term is usually referring to someone who follows Bible prophecy and reports on the signs of the times and connects the prophetic dots. But what does the Word of God tell us about what a true watchman is? Ezekiel 33, 1-9 says, Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. As spoken before in Ezekiel 3, 16 through 27, the image of the watchman has the context of warning of God's approaching judgment. Ezekiel's role as a watchman was connected to when he sees the sword coming upon the land. Now it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear a word from my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, You shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet, if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Ezekiel 3. So, this role of a watchman was similar to the role of a watchman on a city, vigilant to spot the approach of an enemy and warn the residents to muster a defense. The prophet gave timely warnings of approaching judgment. We find other examples of watchmen in 2 Samuel 18 verses 24 through 27 and 2 Kings 9 17 through 20. The apostle Paul had these passages in Ezekiel in mind, referring to the blood being on their own heads, writing in Acts 20 25 through 31. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch, and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Hebrews 13 verse 17 also saying, 
Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. What we find in the scriptures, brothers and sisters, is that a watchman is someone who warns of coming judgment, danger, wolves in sheep's clothing, and also false doctrine. It is not limited to just Bible prophecy. David Guzik comments, quote, There are many who consider themselves watchmen to the people of God today. They watch carefully and look for signs of error or apostasy. There is always a place for those to do what Ezekiel was called to do as a watchman, to discern that God's judgment was coming soon and to warn the people. Yet many who consider themselves modern watchmen focus on the examination of supposed error more than the proclamation of God's word. This is a distortion of Ezekiel's calling as a watchman. A watchman is responsible for declaring the whole counsel of God's word in context, staying true to its original meaning and not imposing any of our own presuppositions into the text. A watchman is not to bring false alarms among the people, but simply to preach the revealed word of God. Where are those who today declare the whole counsel of God? Paul warned that in the last days, people would not endure sound doctrine, but look for teachers who would tell them what they want to hear, teachers who will scratch their itching ears. Many preachers today simply use a Bible text as a launching pad and then go on to say what they want, what the people want to hear. Others throw in Bible quotations to illustrate their points or to illustrate their stories. But who will simply let the Bible speak for itself and let it declare its own power? The Weist Greek translation translates Acts 20 verse 26 like this. Be constantly maintaining a careful watch over yourselves with a view to guarding yourselves. Also, do the same with respect to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit appointed you as spiritual overseers, shepherding the church of God which he bought for himself through the agency of the blood, the blood which is his own unique blood possessed by himself alone. Men who fail to preach sound doctrine and take scripture out of context, sensationalizing the scriptures, disqualify themselves from being watchmen. Their credibility is taken from them because they cannot be trusted to lead people to the truth of God's word. In Jeremiah 23, verse 24 through 27, it says, Can anyone hide himself in secret places? So I shall not see him, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. So today, just as 2 Timothy 4.3 says, we have self-appointed watchmen and prophets, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, teaching, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. 2 Timothy 2, 14-17 So in summary, brothers and sisters, if one is to be a biblical watchman for the Lord, they must meet these qualifications. Number one, they must be 100% obedient to God's leading and God's voice. Number two, 
They are to be true to the Word of God as it is taught in context. Number three, they are to warn people of the coming spiritual dangers such as false teachers, false doctrine, and the coming tribulation period. Number four, they are to be men of integrity who do not impose their own meanings into the text for personal gain. And number five, they must have a love for the people and a love for the truth. The most important thing a watchman can have is a healthy fear of God in humble submission to His will. Maranatha.